So along the plate boundaries, we have uh, different types of well, we have different types of plate, uh, plate boundaries. Uh, the one that sort of regenerates the material are these convergent plate boundaries. So these, uh, and here's a, a, a picture, picture where you have a, an, an ocean ridge, and you know basically magma is is coming in to the ocean and being cooled, and this pushes uh, the plates on either side of it away, and hence the word. I'm sorry, this is divergent. Try that again. So we're talking about uh, a divergent plate. It's the one where magma is coming in and pushing the plates apart. Okay. Uh, convergent plate is where two plates are coming together. Okay. And then you you, you typically have uh, one plate subducting under the other. So this is, that's if you can't read that, that's subduction. And so this plate is moving underneath the other one. And this often occurs, again, with oceanic plates where there's a, a convergent plate in the, in the ocean basically generating new material, pushing the plates apart, and then because of the thin, dent, the thin uh, nature of the oceanic crust and the fact that it's less dense, it'll be pushed under the continental shelves and create faults, okay? Uh, the, the, other, the other type is a transform plate boundary. So in transform plate boundaries, um, basically due to the nature of that, uh, you have material being pushed away, you have material being pushed away here, but it, and it's, while it's subducting here, it's being resisted by friction, of course, right? It's, it's very hard. Uh, for those plates to be subducted. So kind of in the interior, you have these transformed plates, and these are basically areas of shear and lots of cracking. And in fact, uh, lots of you know, cracking, large fractures, okay? So these are large fractures. And most of these occur in oceans, but we have a very uh, yeah. important one on our western coast that everyone knows, which is San Andreas Fault. So the San Andreas Fault is of this type, a convergent plate boundary. I mean, a, a transform plate boundary. Okay. So the reason we really care from the, the from uh, as far as uh, as far as plate tectonics go, is because the plate tectonics then cause faults, and these faults are a major source of stress. And we'll learn about how to resolve stress on these faults in this course. Okay. So. Uh, Just here we'll visually characterize the types of faults, and then later we'll, we'll talk about um, the characterization or classification due to the nature of stress on the fault uh, after we learn what, about stress. So, so a normal fault is described in this picture, uh, where you, you always have sort of the... Um, the, the football is is always the side of the fault uh, in which which goes into the incline, um, and the reason it's called a normal fault is if you could imagine that this picture as I have it drawn is floating in space. If I fix the football, okay, and then I apply gravity. Which side is the hanging wall going to? Which which direction is the hanging wall going to move? Right. Normal, normal to gravity. Okay, that's why they're characterized as a normal fault. Okay. So sort of the opposite of a normal fault is a result fault, is a reverse fault, and the same idea. If this were floating in space, and I, oops, sorry, and I fix the foot wall, and then I apply gravity, but I apply it in the reverse direction. Which way is the hanging wall move? Right. So that's why, just think, if you can just remember that, right? This normal gravity, reverse gravity. Which way is the hanging wall going to move under those conditions? And that's how you characterize the two faults.
Okay. The other type is a strike slip fault. So this is where two faults come together and slide. That one is pretty easy to think about. This is also what uh, the San Andreas fault is and what most transform faults are. Okay. So the reality is, though, that real life is much more complicated and real faults don't exactly look like these ideal idealizations. Um, they can have, real faults can have uh, many of the characteristics of several of these. And in fact, like I said, the San Andreas fault is about 95% strike slip, but, but also has some normal faulting activity as, as well. Okay. So then the sources of tectonic stress uh, are these plate driving stresses that are due to the motion of the tectonic plates. Okay. And again, they can be caused by the plates being pushed by compressive forces from these mid-ocean ridges. Um, of course, th the mantle is molten, but there's some solid material in there. Uh, especially near the top, such that when the plates slide over it, there is friction. Okay, there is friction there, and that can cause additional stress. And of course, uh, a, a very large one is the frictional resistance due to subduction. So just like I s said when I had the picture up early, as one plate slides under another, that's very difficult to do. There's lots of friction there that compresses the plate itself and causes these tectonic stresses. Okay. So uh, there's also buoyancy forces, so density anomalies, right? So different, while I said that at the beginning, the density of the crust is roughly the same, it's obviously not completely homogeneous. It's not completely the same everywhere, right? And if so if you had, uh, due to the nature of the material in, in the crustal region, you could have a lot of, say, dense materials that surround a very uh, uh, not dense set of materials, and that, that density difference itself combined with gravity would cause additional stress in the Earth. Okay? Does everyone sort of know what I mean by, like, by that? Right. So, um, and of course, also, uh, you can have density anomalies due to plate thinning and thickening due to stress itself. So the stress state affects the stress state. So you're, 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 you're pulling on the plate, and, or the plate is being compressed, and it gets thicker, and therefore it becomes more dense because it's, it is a compressible material. It becomes more dense, and then gravity, the body force of gravity, acts on that dense material in a different way, and that can cause additional stress. Okay? And you can also have uh, plate flexure. So you can have just simply sediment loading, just simply the earth piling on top of itself uh, can cause the plates to flex, and, and these flexures can be very, very big. You know, so I give an example here that the wavelength or the, you know, the kind of the characteristic arc of the flex can be very large, like like a thousand kilometers. Okay, so uh, these are this this sort of like I said, it was a very short lecture. Uh, this concludes that and, and uh, next time we'll actually get into sort of the mathematical definition of stress and then once we have that we can talk about other things that affect the stress like the pore pressure and other things. Okay? So I'll see you Thursday.